<laughs> Cold Heart is alive. We back with an exclusive uh, mixing with Cold Heart. Uh, Propeller Heads released a uh, new rec extension, Radical Pianos, something like this. Whatever. So, um, we are not going to go into detail on it right now. We actually, the reason you're here is because we're going to convert some MIDI into audio to free up some computer processing. Or so that it sounds better to me. Alright, so let's go. Alright, so where we at right here, we're going to see if the computer will let you hear it. It's horrible. It's not going to play it. Alright. So, what we got right here are our drums. Start off, let's create us an audio channel. Now, let's go up to whatever we want to take it from. I typically used to take it from there, but now I just keep it coming. In case you haven't done this, you're going to have to do this first. You have to go to your main section, Chord Source. That is it. You've done that. Now you're going to go down to the track you just created, which is right here. This is what I like to do to keep it organized. I'll just copy that name. Take it down there. Paste it. We'll put a P in front of it so we know it's a print track. We'll make it purple. All right. Now we'll go to here. We'll go stereo. Main source record we're ready all right so what it's actually doing is recording everything now that comes in through the mains we don't want that right so we're going to solo what we want which is the drum bus and our two drums uh, we can solo the print track so now all we're going to be listening to are the drums sounds horrible all based on the rest of the track out of timing without the rest of the track let's record that take out pretty click off go the computer is struggling to record this struggling we're gonna see if it affects the audio quality Wife on the side. That's my nigga though. She said, Jay though. Fucks with the boy. Here you go. Here you go. Here you go. So to start that process back up. Alright, for some reason I stopped recording thinking that it was gonna pick up the bands or make a dance. But it's only going to record what's coming out of the master. And if you notice right there, I start recording in the middle. It's not going to be pops and clicks or crossfading issues. It's just going to be perfect. All right, so let's solo that. And No crackles. That is the audio. Alright, so let's speed this process up a little bit. We ain't gonna do the fast motion thing. We're gonna do is gonna now we mute that, which is the actual drums, right? So we go back over here to this. I solo everything. So now that's our drum sound. Already it can play it. Just by subtracting just that one MIDI element. So let's, let's go on through the rest of this track right quick. Now we'll just get it in stereo. Even though it's the bass, I was going to get it in mono. Go ahead and get it in stereo. So, once again, we'll solo the bus that that's on. We'll find that instrument. We'll solo it. Pull it up here. And 
take it to the beginning. I could have did this inside of the blocks themselves. And then each block could have been containing the audio where it was MIDI. And then I could do one version. A lot of times with the drums, what I like to actually do is um just wait and get the whole thing, just record the whole track as if it's one live take. But it's upon what you choose to do. The point of it is as when you see when we get through here, it's gonna allow the computer to process things that I couldn't process. I couldn't even play the song for Pete's sake. Alright, let's listen at that. Sorry about that. All right. Same difference. Copy. Paste. Put P in front of it. Make it purple. Now we'll be able to go through there eventually and see all our purple tracks, and those will be the tracks that's playing. That simple. Sorry, this takes it's taking a minute, but this is just what you're gonna have to slowly do. It's not a lot of elements in the track, so it's not really gonna take that long. All right. Make it soft. That is on the music bus. The reason I'm doing it through the buses is because I got processing on the buses. Depression and things of that nature. Best to take the pre click off while doing this, and then it just makes it so much easier. But if you're in the studio with a client while this is happening, which is not too often, then uh, you know what we're gonna do right here? We're gonna stop that. That is such a sigh, it's so low, right? Let's just do this since we're about to print it anyway. Let's go up here. Throw a L2 on it. Bring it up. Just crunch it. Now. Let's take it back. Let's, look. let's record that. Alright. Much hotter signal. And I think this is, and I kind of know for a fact, but I think this is the way a lot of older engineers work back in the days. You had one piece of equipment. You, had, you wanted to get everything through that state level or that fair trial or whatever. So this is how you had to do it. You had to record it live through it. And then later on, you would throw that same exact one on the bus. So if you can't really process heavy, like the uh, alligator or whatever, do this. And then you get that processed audio out of it. Now, we can actually delete that if we wanted to. We're not gonna, unless we change the lines or something. Let's put it back. So if we play something else later on, it'll be there already. Alright. Same thing. Let's listen. Keep forgetting I got everything solo. Okay. I always want to listen back. Solo all that. Let's meet that one. Okay, so what else we got? We got maybe one more here. Copy that. I really wish they would do the little naming thing where whatever the patch is, it just automatically names names it that because if you mix like I mix and you do tracks like I do tracks, oh my god, you drums, kick, snare, hi hat, you see that all day long. Bass. So it does tell you what it is, but if you're creating with the same uh, tool, like how I'm doing with Regis, then a lot of these patches I like to go back to. So I typically name it the patch. So that way I can just easily go back. And uh, now let's solo that. Soft. That's off now. That's rather. Right. Now, last element of the track here. Let's go. All right. So. I like to go back. I'm not hearing anything, so I'm right. Hold on. 
I'm just going to do them all, and then I'm going to let y'all A and B, and then y'all out of here. What's going on here? Oh, I didn't solo the bus. That's why I wanted to do each one of them, so the simple things you do, you're like, oh, that's why it ain't working. Now, that one's strong enough for me not to put the L2 on right now. I've been putting the L2 on everything lately. It's just, it's almost like cheating. It, to me, it's the best rack extension. Let me get time to uh, praise it right now. It's some serious. We actually got another element in this track, too. Some horns that made me think of with that sound. Um, but this is how you get your mix fatter. Because you're getting some audio in here. And then, like, you could process the shit out of this shit. We ain't even gonna listen to this one. We know it came out right. We're not even gonna name it right. We're just gonna go and finish off the process. We got the horns. We got a good tire and we got some horns. So, let's get another audio track there. And you see how easy this is. It's not like you're really going through and doing some hard work. And if you preset up, like, a lot of print tracks, because you, like, kind of have an idea what you're gonna do, and we're just gonna leave the music bus already solo. All right. And we really could hit record because we know we, if we knew it was on point. There we go. Now. So like I said, you could process the shit out of the uh, kick or whatever the hell you want to do to it. Then print it. And that kick is going to have all that processing on it without the computer having to process it. It's like freezing tracks and other dolls and all that. But I like the way audio sounds when it's being compressed compared to MIDI. Maybe my ears are crazy. Some people say, you know, you can't hear compression until you know it. I'm not a compression expert, but I feel like when I EQ audio and compress audio, it's the difference. And when I look at the uh, professional sessions, they always work on audio. And I know a lot of that stuff is MIDI triggered, but they're still going to take it into the audio. It's just let's work on the computer. So if you're a beginner, I know it's like this is just too much shit to be doing to a track. You just want it to sound all right. But as you get into it, you realize this is the best way to go right here. Get some nice full sounding instruments. And you can work on a computer that's not quite up to par. I'm working with like 4 gigs of RAM and a couple terabytes of hard drive space. Windows 7. Ultimate. Reason 6.0. 5.2 and I try and my computer still maxes out but I like to do a lot of processing because it takes a lot of processing to really get a pro sound okay that's it now let's solo all of the audio and we out of here y'all there it is So now what we could do is, let's just do this, make it easier. We mute the buses, which is where everything was coming on originally. So now the only thing that can come through is the audio. Appreciate y'all for checking me out. Call hard as a lie.